Yeah. We see his start. He has his one Tapu Lele in hand, uh, deciding to keep it in the deck over that Remoraid. Or over the Octillery, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play an Ultra Ball. As you know, he started with that um, baby Buzzle, as it's known, the non GX Buzzle that we've been talking about. Probably the biggest, most important card, I think, that come out in recent time, although there has been a lot of them. Uh, Remoraid is going to hit the bench, going to power up that Octillery we talked about a little bit ago. Yeah, uh, definitely one of the ideal starts for this Buzzle like an Rock deck. Getting that Remory down turn one, one of your biggest soft spots is to end later on in the game. But wow, a Sycamore there coming down from Pramwat here, discarding another Sycamore, Lele and Lycanroc. He did have the opportunity to Tapu Lele for maybe a Cynthia or an N, but chose that really aggressive route. So why do you think one of the reasons, like why would he, why would he choose to do that rather than taking the safer play? He just wants to draw as many cards as possible? Uh, so you could see it that way, but honestly, uh, depending on his list, I think he went to the 2-2 like in Rock now. So you're kind of like, I can afford to super rod this back later if I need to. Makes sense. And then as we were talking about Tapu Lele before, how these decks play one now, they really don't even want to bench it most of the time. It is such a liability on the bench. And remember when we were talking about them trying to force them into two turns of Beast Ring, where, okay, you're going to go to four prizes, I'm going to knock out something, you're going to go to three prizes, and then I'm going to knock out something again. Right. There's a Max Elixir. Hits, finds that Fighting Energy, one of uh, nine in Michael's list. Attach from the hand and a pass back to Pedro. All right. So Pedro having that Bridget in hand is super important here because he started that Tapu Lele, meaning if he didn't have that Bridget, he would need an Ultra Ball for another Tapu Lele just so we can get that Bridget this turn. So before... Pedro takes his turn. Before we look at the specifics, what do you just think of the matchup on paper? We've got Buzzwool Lycanroc versus Zorak Lycanroc. Uh, Pedro, of course, does have the Mew EX and the Mewtwo we were talking about earlier. Uh, try to counter the Buzzwool, but what, how do you think it plays out just kind of, you know, most of the time? So honestly, uh, looking at his list, it's almost identical to Sheffield, the, the one that won. It does have one basic fighting over a fourth strong, which I actually think hurts it in this matchup more than it helps because you need that strong energy and double colorless on a Lycanroc to take a knockout on a Buzzful. But if you have one less strong, there's going to be more times that you actually just can't be able to find it. Right, right. Interesting. So, so you may be cut, just trying to find room, cut down, you know, sticking with four non-colorless energy, but you think it's actually going to end up hurting him here. Yeah, well, you basically go into the tournament and you're like, all right, what am I afraid of? Well, I, there could be a random person playing Zerkatry GX, uh, but that one fighting doesn't help with that. It's really just so you do not get blown out by Enhanced Hammer. And in this matchup, he's not going to have to worry about that. So uh, it's really going to see, and with those two double colorless prize, he's going to try to be forced to go more like in Rock early. And... We'll have to see if, yeah. it, if it ends up hurting him. We see he does Bridget for three Zorua. Ends up Ultra Balling for a Rock Ruff. Going to go ahead and attach a Strong to that Rock Ruff, so that's a nice play to have. And just as a pass back with the Tapu Lele Ooh. GX active. Pram draws for the turn an N. His there it hand is. is Brooklet Hill, Beast Energy, Choice Band. And his hand went from, eh, it's all right. I'm going to do 90 to this Tapu Lele, which I, I'm... Sad to say that I think that's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's only two, an all right turn, turn two, two play. Turn 90 for one. Uh, but drawing this N here just keeps his hand alive. Yeah, I mean, just like, just look at look at Michael Pramwatt's board on turn two. He has a B-string choice band buzzwell active. Beast one of the Beast energy, right, sorry. Uh, one on the bench with two energy already. You just And then look at Pedro's. He's got three Zorawads. You just got to be feeling the pressure immediately. Now, to be fair, personally... Zorak like Rock would have been my deck of choice if I was playing. Pedro had almost one of the perfect starts. Uh, it's actually fine starting Tapu Lele here because it means he doesn't take a knockout on a Zorua. On a relevant Pokemon, right, right. Uh, and since he plays Acerola, maybe he could draw it off that end, do something. But getting that strong energy on that Rock Rough turn one, that's what you need because you kind of have this 
feeling of being safe, uh, not essentially against Buzzwool, but of players going, oh, Tapu Lele, get Guzma, double colorless, Guzma up your Rockruff, 60 HP that you attach the energy to, knockout. That 70 HP Rockruff is probably one of the biggest additions for Zorak Lycanroc, because now you can go strong energy, and then next turn, double colorless, Lycanroc, bring up one of your guys, float stone my active, knockout. Yeah, that's absolutely true. We've seen people switch off of the kind of, you know, in a vacuum, I think, better um, rock roughs just for that extra HP, as we see Michael Pramwatt has the <laughs> artillery on the board. Meanwhile, Pram is playing that one corner because, you know, he wants to steal a game with that. Yeah, corner, I think, is kind of the... You'll see you'll see one, basically, uh, in my experience. Oh, that's so much damage. Getting that Diancy with that Brooklet Hill... Or just drawing it off the end. I'm not sure which one order he did. But 110 damage now. Turn two for one energy. Yep, putting Pedro in a pretty tough spot. Looks like Pedro's going to go ahead and activate the Brooklet Hill, finding another Rock Rough. Again, you know, this, this oh, card is so corner. strong. corner! <laughs> yeah, that's the corner one. So his hand is actually sick right here. He has Timer Ball. If he hits two heads, this is going to be a great turn. <sighs> All right. My personal experience... I've hit two heads a lot with Timer Ball. Lucky. I've never hit one heads. I either hit two <laughs> heads or zero heads. All right. Average luck. Uh, he also has the Lycanroc already in hand. So what do you think of this here? Pedro plays the Parallel City, limiting uh, Pram's bench, and he chooses to get rid of the, the Rock Rough. Do you think that's forced, basically? Oh, it, it's definitely forced. Uh, this Parallel City is huge. Three or all four Pokemon on Pram's bench, he wanted to keep that Rock Ruff is going to be so important later on, especially against uh, the Lycanroc that's going to come down this turn. And yeah, we saw the two heads yep. getting I was two say, Zorark. We also just see two heads, two Zorark GXs, two trades available, and uh, both players doing a really good job of going off. Yeah, but you can't really, on Pram's side, you can't really get rid of Octillery. That's your late game, like, I, I need this. Of course. Uh, and then uh, you spent a turn charging up that bus wall on the bench, and then Diancy, it's gone forever if it's off the field. So you can't really get rid of that. So he was kind of forced to do that rock rough, like you said. And see, seeing uh, Michael's face there as... <laughs> like like he said, two heads, two yeah. tails, just it, like we it, drew it up. Uh, Murphy's Law or Commentator's Curse? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what. Another trade from uh, Pedro. third Zorark off that top of the deck. He's He has the Ace of Roll in hand as well. He sure this does. is the best possible hand Pedro could have started with these first two turns. Pick up that Tapu Lele. Now has the Lycanroc double colorless. And he could choose to take a knockout on the active or the bench puzzle. I think you have to go for the active to get that beast energy out of play. Does he have the Lycanroc in hand? I did not. I he didn't. does. Oh, he yeah. does. Okay, there it is. His hand's insane. Yeah, this, this, this is. I mean, that's that's what Triple Zorak will do for you, right? Yeah, and well, he also found that double colorless when he only had two in the deck, which was pretty good. Sometimes you got to rely on that stuff. Of course, prizes playing a big factor. The top of your deck can matter a lot. There's a field blower. Just going to go ahead and get rid of that choice band. The, the Field Blower might signify that he's eyeing something else with this Bloodthirsty Eyes. You don't really want to get rid of a card like that when your opponent plays these Brooklet Hills, these Float Stones, these Choice Bands. You really just want to maximize, get that two cards off of it. But with here, yeah, he's going to bring up that Octillery. And so huge turn here from Pedro. Parallel City getting rid of the Rock Rough. And then this Lycanroc GX taking down the Octillery using Claw Slash. So wh why do you target down the Octillery there rather than one of the kind of bigger, more threatening attackers? Well, the thing is, these Buzzwall aren't really that threatening without all these damage modifiers. Right now, he's looking down like, all right, you got a Beast Energy. I got rid of your Choice Band. Of course, he got another one, got another Rock Ruff. <laughs> strong Energy on the Rock Ruff. Uh, Classic Prams. <laughs> this game's been back and forth. Uh, I really don't know who is going to win this game. I think that is a strategy that we've seen. Uh, you'll see some players take, so uh, this is actually relevant in the Malamar decks too, where sometimes the answer is you need to knock out the Malamars. You need to stop what they're doing. And uh, Artillery, not exactly the same as Malamar, but it's kind of a, okay, I'm going to take this knockout here and kind of cut you off later in the game. Yeah, you, you sacrifice you, your early game. You're like, okay, I, you'll probably take like four or five prizes, but you're never going to take that sixth prize. Yeah, when I end you down to one or two, you're not going to have any way to draw out of it. 
Oh, there we see the Mew EX in Pedro's hand off that N, a very important card in this matchup as well. Mostly later on, though, because uh, this Lycanroc's able to just clean up these bus walls. That Pedro ahead here seems to be basically hitting everything he needs. Uh, Premwat's good start could not match Pedro's as he just goes, goes ahead, attacks 110, passes the turn. Right. Pedro draws another Lycanroc GX, and Granted, to be fair, we're talking about how great the start is. He only really has this Lycanroc. Uh, I don't know if he found that double colorless in the prizes, but he really needs to find another energy to get down on that rock rock on the bench. I'm just assuming he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna find ways to do things with three three Zoroarks in play. Maybe. <laughs> it's not like he draws six cards a turn extra. <laughs> Wonder Tag here for the Guzma. Uh, might just be trying to save this Lycanroc. Uh, might just... Because he has the other one in hand as well. It would be interesting if he tries to see if he can take a knockout with Zorark here as well. Oh, Enhanced Hammer coming in huge right now. Being able to get rid of either the Beast Energy on the active or the Strong Energy on the Rock Ruff on the bench. Just essentially setting back Michael a turn. Which one do you think you hit here, the strong or the beast? I mean, honestly, I, I couldn't tell you at this point. Both are really good. Uh, it really depends if he actually chooses to Guzma up the Rock Ruff or Bloodthirsty Eyes the Rock Ruff. Then, of course, you're going to do the beast energy, but... If you want the bus hole down, then you take off the strong energy. Basically, whatever one you think is still going to be on the board the next turn you're going to take down. We could also see a play where he goes Enhanced Hammer the Active, puzzle of Double Puzzle of Time, Enhanced Hammer the Strong, and then Lycanroc bring up the bench bus hole, and all of a sudden, all the energy on Pram's side of the board is done. It looks like he might be considering that, looking through his discard pile. He does have the two Puzzle of Time. There's the Bloodthirsty Eyes targeting down the Rock Ruff. Not only two puzzle on, there's three puzzle on. <laughs> he is reaching a critical mass, going for that full four puzzle of time where you play four of them and you just show off to your opponent. And there's a knockout from Pedro. No more rock rough on Pram's side of the board. Yeah, things are looking rough here for Pram. Staring we're looking down. a little less rough than they were. You know, no rock rough, like we <laughs> said. Staring down. Essentially, two Lycanrocs charged up from Pedro here. And Buzzwool not known for playing Energy Disruption like Enhanced Hammer. But let's see. Here's yeah. the thing. Pedro is down to four prizes now, meaning Pram could go off here with a big turn of B-Strings. Yeah, this is exactly what we were talking about. Uh, Pedro, even though he is ahead, is again at four prizes. B-String is active. I don't know Pram's hand. I don't know if he has access to it, but he's going to want to... Uh, and again, losing that artillery that. Uh, kind of lowers the explosiveness of this turn. Exactly. Uh, I think that was a good... Like, I think that's a play that a lot of newer, less experienced players might not make. You know, they might be afraid to take out the attackers, but taking out the artillery may have actually, you know, maybe a key to the game here. Oh, charging up that Diancy Prism Star. It does attack for 90 damage, uh, which is... Just enough to knock out Lycanroc. There's another Max Elixir. Yeah, I, I, also, he does. I also appreciate Pram playing the Super Rod before he plays his Max Elixirs. Uh, a play that people really overlook. Here's the B-String. So wow, that's two, three, four energy attached this turn, and we haven't had an attachment from the hand yet. It's pretty good. Yeah, pretty, uh, it's pretty right. reasonable. It's all right. And remember, Sledgehammer's doing 120 damage this turn. Nothing to laugh at. Ran with a uh, basic fighting and a strong in hand. I think kind of deciding. He has what the to ultra ball as well. Where. So this is interesting. He super added back to Tapu Lele. So he could ultra ball, but it means getting rid of two energy, a uh, strong being one of them. And yep. yet he chooses not to really just like, okay, I'm going to get more cards in my hand. I can yep. do it next turn. Yeah, it's going to make the decisions once you have more information. You get to see what your opponent does. You get to take two prizes. Smart play by Pram Wad. Pram is, uh, yeah, again, one of the best players in the world. Not someone to kind of make small sequencing mistakes most of the time. Just yeah, really going to play to his outs. If, if you look at his board as well, there is no two-prizer on that board, meaning 
B-String will be active next turn no matter what. Uh, Pedro's really going to have to look for maybe an N here this turn. Definitely something Pedro is thinking about. Just turns and turns of B-String, which he actually has in hand for Michael Pramawad. Yeah, it, Bram's hand is insane. He, he got the B-String and the Brooklet Hill off of the prizes. That is a Buzzful GX in itself. Exactly. We do see uh, Pedro has found a double colorless, so he's going to be able to attack with the Lycanroc. And here's and, the end. Yeah. It's the card you said would matter. Maybe not at this point yet, but that, that, uh, that absurd hand of Pram's is going back in the deck. Yeah, uh, Pram had five cards in his hand. He's just going down to four now, but we'll have to see if he actually can get a lot of his gas going. Yeah, his hand was pretty stacked, so it's not as simple as just losing a card, but still a lot of powerful cards in the deck for Pramawad. And remember, Pedro, he still has all these trades. Uh, oh, yeah, I think this is the second one? Yeah. He just did? N, N does not hurt a Zorark deck with three Zoraks in play at all. You can see Pedro shaking his head, uh, looking at some body language there, maybe not drawing what he needs despite having so many trades. Uh, it could be interesting. The Mewtwo here is a pretty good pickup off that last trade, uh, especially with at least one double colorless left in his prizes. He could spike that off, and it's just a pretty good attacker, especially against the Buzz GX. Yeah, non non EX Pokemon hits for weakness, going to punish Buzz for having energy on it. Uh, Mewtwo has just been a huge factor in all of this. All right. Dancy coming up just because it can retreat if you want to. It won't leave your friends behind. Here's an Ultra Ball from Michael Pramawad's side. Man, what, what a hand. It is Ultra Ball, I think a Rock Ruff, a Strong Energy, and a B-String. Yep. And maybe a Cynthia. Yep. No, no more Strong Energy, no more Rock Ruff. Instead, that's going to get turned into a Buzzwool GX, it looks like, from that Ultra Ball. Yeah, you're kind of forced into this position just because, yeah, if you do the B-String and then attach a Strong, you're left without a hand. And sure, you take the knockout on the Lycanroc, but you really just want to keep playing the game. Yeah, the, the next few turns will not be pretty for you if that's what you choose to do, but instead, Pramwat's going to do all that and then play a Cynthia. Draw six fresh cards. So what, what is he looking for here off this Cynthia? What does he want to draw? Ironically, a strong energy. Okay. <laughs> um, choice Band would be another good hit. Uh, let's see. Choice Band, but he doesn't have another energy. He does miss the energy there. Uh, I didn't see how many were left in his deck after he played the uh, B-String. I believe there was two strong energy at least um and maybe another fighting but wow uh yeah we, just, we might just see a very anemic turn here from Pramwa. yeah he just kind of drew the wrong half of the cards he needs he has a lot of powerful cards in his deck but none of them are the energy he drew three none of them, guzma and yeah, none of them are the ones that allow him to actually attack profitably yeah if uh he would have seen those guzma early on this would have been a completely different game looks like Pramwa debating the retreat here just thinking over his options so a retreat means 60 or 80 to the active lichen rock with a buzz but he's you're gonna the try pass. to knock it out yeah you're gonna try to knock it out anyway uh although to be fair now he's gonna lose this diancy prism meaning he needs the strong energy now for the buzzful gx to take knockout uh it, another basic fighting will not work so pram just kind of saying i'm gonna take the slightly riskier line uh, that's just, I mean, I have to hope that I hit the strong next turn and just, you, you can just have the DNC. Uh, he also does have the out of just going Guzma take a knockout on Zorark, Guzma take a knockout on Zorark, and just ignoring the Lycanroc altogether. Which we do know he has the two Guzma in hand. Three. Now. Three <laughs> Guzma in hand as of now. Uh, but it's really going to come down to uh, maybe Pedro finding a Mew EX or the Mewtwo and getting a knockout on that Buzzful GX. So we see Pedro almost play the end there, or think about playing it, and then he decided to trade. Generally, what you want to do there, uh, important with Zorark GX sequencing, just kind of use your trades up first and then decide on things you kind of can't take back. So the multi-switch is a very cool card. He chooses to discard it there. 
but it, it could be something cute to note later on in this match. Just being able to surprise Claw Slash out of nowhere, supply, surprise Dangerous Rogue out of nowhere, uh, even just surprise a Mew EX. Uh, it, it's really important. A little bit less of a surprise now that Primal knows about it. Oh, I, I, think trade, it's a, but... I think it's a one of in every yeah, card. Yeah, like, like it's known at this point. And there you go. There's Two cards in the Lost Zone. I think five more Pokemon away in the Lost Zone until you win with Lost World. Oh, but it looks like Michael Bramowitz is going to go ahead and concede. <laughs> uh, just thinking, you know, I need to save time. I think I'm in a really rough spot. I don't look like he had two uh, strong energy prized. Doesn't Ooh, think he can get back yeah. into it. So he's just going to go ahead and uh, jump into the next game. Now, all you Paramount fans, don't, don't be afraid. This deck has some very explosive turns like we saw. And it, anything can happen. But... Lycanroc being just such a huge attacker in this matchup, being able to take out everything in Pram's side of the field. Oh, I mean, if you're a Michael Pramwatt fan, you, you're never worried when he plays a match. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen this guy, uh, I've seen this guy, um, he, he, he's gonna mal, he's supposed to mal, he's supposed to put two cards he wants on top of his deck, he messes up, he just has to draw the top two, they're the two he would have put there anyway. <laughs> Pram, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what deck he's playing, it's, it's Michael Pramwatt, it's a uh, Classic Prams. He did not get there in game one, but so we'll have to see if uh, games two and three will be a little bit different. Yeah, uh, going first again uh, didn't really help him because Pedro started that Tapu Lele. Again, if he started a Zoro or a Rockruff, completely different game. So you, what do you think that uh, Pramawat needs to be different here in order to win. What, what, what went wrong in that game that Pram needs to fix this game? We should take a look at the prizes real quick. Uh, Baby Buzz, Lycan Rock. So he had a lot of hard discards. Earlier on with that Parallel City, discarding that Rock Rough, man, that was huge. Yeah, that was rough. And then, of course, uh, having to discard that Strong Energy off that Ultra Ball just so he can try to keep things going. The very and card then, he would need and later. Then, yeah, the very card he needs the next turn or even that turn. Uh, it, it, it was really just a series of unfortunate events that came out. So just hopefully a stronger opening hand, maybe some better draws in the middle of the game will lead Michael Premwat to victory or will Pedro tie things up or win the second game, win the match, advance in the tournament. Nothing huge prize. We have a confused Mewi X on the board. <laughs> <laughs> was it upside down? I was yeah. not. I was not looking. Mew EX versus Rock Ruff. Michael Pramwatt's going first, playing here, hoping to win this match, tie things up. Max Lixer is the first play, and it hits. Of course, it does. And one thing I actually love right now is with that one basic fighting energy, you can actually <laughs> attach it to Mew and copy like Dangerous Rogue or copy something like that. Uh, it's very cute maybe only works like one out of ten games, but it's worth it. You're going to play a lot of games here at the uh, North America International Championship as another Max Elixir comes down, two energy on the very first turn. There's a third from the hand and a Cynthia from Michael Pramwad. It's an alright turn. It's an alright. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's Three casual. energy? Like, he could get four. Uh, although, yeah. we, he still has six more cards. He didn't go big. It's kind of like, it reminds me of when people would, uh, you know, play a lot of gets this and expand it and it's like uh, I only get this for eight or nine that's not that's not the max it's not perfect uh, one thing that would be pretty insane here from Michael would be or maybe two max elixirs the double max elixir <laughs> all four max elixirs turn one let's go please I want to see it <laughs> he actually just decides to play none of them and just pass the turn back to Pedro yeah uh, the interesting thing is with the Mew being active if Pedro gets the Tapu Lele in play, he could commit a double colas to the Mew and take a knockout on the Rock Ruff because it is the 160 HP one in his deck. Ooh, that, that's actually a good point. Maybe come back to bite him a little bit. But looking at Pedro's hand, it does not look like he has that option. Uh, but he is choosing to discard a Zorark GX. It looks like he was struggling a little bit with that Ultra Ball. Yeah, he had the strong energy and then I think two Zorarks in his hand as well. Kind of determining what to discard there. Taking a look through his deck, figuring out his prizes. Yeah, I think uh, he's counting float stones. You really kind of 
All right, you identify what are the important cards in the matchup. Well, Floatstone's important because it's going to save this Mew EX for <laughs> the next few turns. Um, it also can, like, Floatstone your active Zoroark to surprise a Mew or a Mewtwo. Um, and then, of course, looking for all the puzzles. And he actually has the Tapu Lele in hand. So opting no Bridget here, Ultra Balls for that Zorua and is now looking to eye down maybe a Cynthia? It looks like he's still kind of taking... Yeah, uh, his hand time. is a strong energy and a choice band. So that can be one of the uh, rough things. I think, you know, obviously Bridget, Tapu Lele into Bridget is a very uh, common play, but you cannot afford to make those type of plays when it leaves you with nothing else. You're just hoping to top deck. Yeah, well, I also like this play because it still leaves the option for drawing double color is taking knockout open. Yes. He's if just if you do points. that and Pram doesn't get the return knockout on Mew EX, you just knock out the buzz wall next turn. You're like, okay, uh, what can you do? <laughs> and there it is, a double colorless. Two of them, in fact. And another Zorua as well. Not the prettiest hand in the world uh, after this turn, but there's a Professor Kui that could get there. He's got some draws in it. He might take a prize this turn as he attaches to the Mew. And go there we see the energy drive. Knockout on that. Brock Ruff. All right, let's see what Pram can put together. Baby Buzzle active, considering an Ultra Ball. And again, we've seen Pram two games in a row now. Discard that Tapu Lele. I don't need this Tapu Lele. I'll, I'll draw my supporters. All right, step one. Diancy gets Diancy. That means with an energy and one heads flip, a swing around could take a knockout on this Mew EX. Granted, if Pram gets a strong energy, he doesn't need to flip coins. Even though probably yeah. he'd get two heads. Oh, of course. It's not, it's not even a question. All right, there's the Buzzwell GX. Here is a Max Elixir. Misses. We all can't be perfect. It's fine. No, it doesn't happen every time. If it was a perfect world, then I think everyone would be playing Max Elixir. They were just guaranteed to hit. Here <laughs> we like, go. It's another energy I could play on top of my energy. The fourth Max Elixir in the game, and it misses wow. again. Things are not looking good here for Paramount. Yeah, so now he's in a position where he's saying, okay, I can find that energy, you know, hopefully get a knockout here, but his, he, he can't max elixir anymore. He can't really accelerate. Yeah, he's going to rely solely on B-string, and with that Buzzswell GX on the bench, it's going to be easy pickings for Pedro in the next coming turns. Oh, no, the one energy that he gets is a beast energy. It does allow him to take the knockout, but you also kind of don't want to sacrifice that right away. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an unfortunate use of it, even though it does get the knockout and the two prizes for Pram. So here's the good thing for him. It looks like Pedro's hand is literally just Professor Kukui. Right, yeah, he just has the Kukui. No rock rough down. All right, let's see what he can put together. All right, Tapu Lele is a pretty good attacker for him here. Just being able to double colorless deal 100 damage right away. But you might as well just get one hit on the next turn by this baby Buzzwell. There's the Kikui. He's just, the look on his face when he plays the Kikui, knowing it's not his best option. I, I swear I heard Michael's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> double colorless. All right, yeah, and unfortunately, that Choice Band does not add that 30 damage against this Buzzwall, so he will not be able to take the knockout. He is 10 short. Where is the Reverse Valley? <laughs> yep, and here we go. There, There's the attack. 120. Don't forget. A All good. All right. Action back on Michael Pramorod. Looks like Strong Energy was the top deck. So, so this is what we were talking about. Like, okay, neither player has really done anything. But as long as Paramount just keeps attaching energies and attacking, he's going to win this game. Yeah, his, his deck just has a lot. I like to call them moving parts. There's a lot fewer of them. You know, as you can see, Pedro has no Zoroarks up. Pram uh, going to be in a rough spot if, when this baby buzz goes down, but he can't think about that right now. He's got to focus on the, the present. Yeah, he actually sycamores away to Brooklet Hill here. Uh, just does not want to deal with Lycanroc from Pedro's side of the field. Yeah, yeah, doesn't want to give Pedro a chance to use it. There's a knockout. Well, attaching a fourth energy to that Buzzwall, the strong energy, 
And Making the choice it so it gets the knockout. Two prizes remaining, strong and big Ooh, buzz. The good old turn four Bridget? <laughs> Not exactly the intended use of the card, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Two rock roughs coming down. Do do we see a double colorless to <laughs> I think it's what? Ram? <laughs> no. Yeah. On the Zork? Yeah, on the Zorua and just well, take the knockout. <laughs> yeah, I mean it doesn't have many better options. Uh, you can't Based leave, you can't leave that support. Ultra Beast there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, the other thing has four energy on it. Yeah, one more, and you could, like, Ninja Boy into a Guzzlord or something Looks like, like that. Looks like he only has strong energy in hand. Ooh. And, wow, this Buzzwall living another turn, not being knocked out. Just 10 HP remaining. Guzma. And he doesn't even... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh go ahead and Guzma back to the original Baby Buzz. Take the knockout. One prize remaining for Pramorwat. Top deck is the double colorless, and that's going to be a scoop as Michael Pramorwat ties things up one and one here in round five. Yeah, no timer balls from Pedro there. No, no not a whole no lot. Not a whole lot of anything from Pedro there. Is he just ended the game with Zoras in play? Uh, just yeah, the turn four Bridget, like you said. I mean, it's always a bad feeling when you. When your opponent, they have a bunch of cards in hand, they're head on board, and then you have to play a Bridget instead of an N. And you're going to say, okay, well, I just I hope your seven-card hand doesn't have it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we saw there, like, Pedro was looking pretty good, too. It's just that hand he Cynthia'd into could not get him any further than that first knockout. I mean, you just saw the look on his face when he had to play the Kaku, and he just kind of shrugged and said, okay, well, I, you know, this isn't really where I want to be on a turn two or three or whatever it was. But that's what you got to do. It didn't hit anything, and Prime was able to just kind of outspeed him. Yeah, and I believe we still have plenty of time for a, a final game. These games have gone pretty quick. Here we go. Players shuffling. Pedro is going to get a chance to go first. Nice honorable handshake there. Yeah, remember, these are two former international champions looking to win a second one, trying to catch up to Tord. Yeah, you don't play the tournament unless you want to win, and no one's going to catch Tord for a while, I suspect, but you got to give it your all. Let's take a look at Pramowat's prizes. The Beast Energy. Both Rock Rough starts, too. Uh, one thing that Pedro did not get. Double, double colorless again. Really? Wow. All right. Uh, I mean, it worked first game. Might, might as well work game three for him. Yeah, I mean, you know. You, 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 you keep them in your prizes so, so you'll draw them later on. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. It's, it's a guaranteed draw at that point. All right, game three, 17 minutes left on the clock. Pedro going first. Again, with another rough hand here. Ultra Ball discarding a puzzle time and a Zorua. Not what you want to see from your turn one Ultra Ball. And he still has a decision to make. He could go Lele into the Bridget. His hand is, I think, Lycanroc and Timer Ball with, like, a strong energy. Or he could just try to go for a supporter, but it didn't really work out last game. Well, it's interesting, right? Because we were just talking about how you can't really afford to bridge it with nothing else. But if he has Timer Ball, Timer Ball can turn into Zorox, and that turns into a lot of cards. So that he's relying on some that, coin flips. That's a big flips. if, though, yeah. That is a big if, but it looks like the uh, plan he's going to take here. Yeah, definitely looking for at least another Rock Rough, one of the more important cards in this matchup, like we said. Lycanroc, just such an amazing card. Being able to swing games just by itself. Looks like looking through his deck has put uh, two, Zora, two Zorua rather, and a Mewtwo up front. Those are going to hit the bench off of Bridget. So this is a risky play because I think he does have that strong energy in hand. I don't think he discarded off the Ultra Ball. Yeah, he discarded the Zoro in the puzzle. Uh, so he can attach to the active, and it kind of feels safe. But again, Buzzwell's a deck where it's like, okay, if I get a Max Elixir, a Proclit Hill, and just like a Diancie or something like that, like I can take a knockout. Yeah, you're never really safe, but that is what he chooses to do. Strong Energy on the Rock Rough, pass back, action on Pramawad. Brooklet Hill, something we saw Pram uh, not play last game just to kind of cut Pedro off of options, but deciding that he needs it. He has pulled that Diancie Prism start to the front, just like you predicted. Well, there's that. He has a Lycanroc in hand with three basic energy and a Max Elixir. 
uh, not really what you really want to see because you're like, well, I have a lot less of a chance to hit this Max Elixir with three in my hand. Yeah, three of the nine that uh, Pram plays gone. Yeah, eyeing down that Remoraid as well. Uh, we hey, could see going back maybe not even really an attack here from Pram this this turn. Oh, there is the Remoraid, and that kind of that, that, that just signals that he's kind of going more for the long game. Doesn't think that he can kind of just try to go off this turn, right? He needs to be able to draw cards and get out of this sticky situation. But again, that's scary because we know Pedro has that Lycanroc in hand. He just needs to find a double colorless, and he's going to start taking knockouts like that. Ram readying an Ultra Ball, it looks like, but not before a fighting goes on the Rock Ruff. Again, the, the body language of these two guys makes it very clear to see how they're feeling, and just Ooh, passes back. Timer Ball. One heads. All right. We got there. All right. That's, you know, we're, we're one, one Zara can turn into two. <laughs> Average luck. Here we go. So Zorark and then activating Brooklet Hill, finding a Rock Ruff. I also saw the double colorless in Pedro's hand. Uh, such a heartbreak because he's going to like and rock, bring out that Remoraid. Pram did nothing on the turn, so we can Ultra Ball for an Octillery next turn. Right. Uh, and oh my god, like. <laughs> Trade turns into two Zoroarks. Yep, there's another one, like in Rock. He's actually deciding not to use Bloodthirsty Eyes, just knocking out the Rock Ruff, taking a prize. Pramorat top decks as Professor Sycamore. That, that, that was actually the better play because with Pram's hand, like in Rock, Dangerous Row just completely negates Pedro's turn. Uh, so you leave him with no attack or no energy on board. And you're like, yeah, I have this like in Rock. I can knock out anything you have. Looks like he did find a double colorless off the prizes as well. Yeah, uh, his hand's insane. It's a puzzle of time and a double colorless. That's all you really need. You'll draw the rest later on. Yeah, you, you got trades. You, you got options. Brooklyn oh. Hill getting that bus wall ultra ball for the Octillery, and I believe Pram drew a Sycamore for the turn. Yeah, he top decked the Sycamore. Uh, the only supporter he has He's going to have to go ahead and looks like he's going to fire off a Max Elixir. Will it hit? He only has six left in the deck. Does Another not. miss. Wow. Uh, and, Max Luxor has not been a good card for Michael outside of turn one. Yeah, that, I mean, that feels bad. Obviously, the Max Luxor is a you know, luck-based effect, but you build your deck in a certain way. You kind of uh, expect the turns to be a little bit uh, different based on hitting Max Elixirs, and it never feels good when you miss, especially so many as Pram has in this series. Wow, we actually see a retreat uh, thanks to that attachment for the turn, doesn't really want to risk not drawing Floatstone here. And really just like, all right, you can't attach energy to that Buzzwell and the active now, so you're not attacking this turn. Yeah, Bissell Hand finds him an Ultra Ball, getting rid of a Fighting and a Brooklet Hill. Oh, I found all of his Pokemon. They're right in the middle of his deck. <laughs> that Rock Ruff coming into play. And again, with having to use that energy to retreat, there's not going to be an energy coming down on the Rock Ruff for a Dangerous Rogue next turn. Uh, he's really going to be on the back foot, and the Buzzwall could get, or is going to get knocked out. And sure, Beast Ring is going to be active, but there's no Ultra Beast in play. He's really going to have to work for, uh, to try to get this win. Oh, well, there's an Ultra Beast for the next turn. With that baby Buzz off the Sycamore. Yeah, not really. Like He's set up for a little bit, but he's so far behind right now. Uh, just been a quick one-two punch with this Lycanroc. Another timer ball. Oh. <laughs> Misses. All right, we're, we're on Double below tails. average right, luck yeah. at this point. Another trade. And Zorak Lycanroc is a deck, like, we, we usually see Evo Soda is, is the card of choice for, like, Zorak decks, mm -hmm. just because it's an extra way to just, yeah, I'll get Zorak in play. But you really want to utilize Lycanroc's Bloodthirsty Eyes, and Evo Soda does not do that. So that's why you see players take the risk with timer ball. And man, does it feel bad to do double tails, but man, does it feel good to do double heads. Well, in, in this deck in particular, like, like we were talking about earlier, when you, when, you, when you got the one Zorark, and you're like, oh, it can just turn into two. Like, having one Zorark isn't necessarily the same as just having any other uh, stage one, right? That allows you to have, get so much draw power, go through your deck so quickly that the, you know, medium case scenario of one heads is usually just fine. Oh, yeah, and here we see Pedro actually discarding the double colorless from his hand just to secure this Lycanroc so he can take the knockout on the Rock Ruff. The knockout back to Pram. Floatstone Doctillery getting set up into the active position. 
looks like he does have a super odd, a uh, great utility card. Just you play so many one ofs in this deck, you really need to make sure you have them later on in the game. And super odd's the card that does that for you. Also, super odd in combination with Brooklyn Hill is insane. Yeah, you just put it right back onto the field. Not a big deal at all. There's the first beast ring from Pram here. Gets two basic energy, so he just super odded his stuff into play. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely did. Two energy on the board. But again, there's not really, like, he's not going to take this one hit knockout on this Lycan Rock. He's not going to have enough damage modifiers. Uh, we could see a Guzma here to just take a knockout on a Zorark to try to keep up in the prize trade. It looks like that's what's happening. Guzma on the Zorark. Sledgehammer Buzzle. for a lot of damage. I believe it is 320 damage right now. Floatstone comes down. Abyssal Hand for four cards. And his hand still is good. There's Max Elixir. Which he'll, yeah, prob well, he'll probably miss it. Like, yeah, I mean, it just depends on uh, your definition of good, I suppose. Because there is a way for him to just navigate through this game of, yeah, I'm going to Guzma your other Zorak next turn, and then I'm going to Guzma your Tapu Lele and win. Basically just kind of going around uh, Pedro, right? kind of not worrying about what threats he's presenting, just choosing to uh, prey on his board a little bit. Yeah, he's definitely on a clock, though. Uh, these Lycan Rocks are relentless, man. Just oh, yeah, I mean... Look at them. They're just, they're just, there's two out there now. He, Pedro's drawing cards. He's Guzmaing. There's the other one protecting. And even has the other double colorless to Claw Slash. Again, Field Blower coming down, getting rid of both Float Stones. Definitely taking away some of the utility Pram has next turn. Yeah, not going to be able to just kind of freely, safely retreat anymore. That's a knockout. Oh, and he's actually trying to think up, can I deal two... 100 damage with this buzzwole on the bench. We might even see a retreat from this active one. He has that beast energy. He has a choice band. He has a strong energy on the bench one already. Man, okay, so base 80 damage, base 100 or 100 with the Diancie. Then you have 120 with the strong, 150, uh, 180. So we'd be 20 short. Unfortunate situation for Michael Pram. I feel like this whole match has kind of been unfortunate situations for Pram. Well, we say unfortunate, but like if he keeps drawing B strings and he, he could just steal the game. That Max Elixir does hit. Basic fighting on the benched bu baby buzzwool. I was actually surprised that Max Elixir hit because with the two basic in his hand, he's gone through so many. He did super out the two back, but. Okay, super so two back and then he, he, them. If he flips enough heads, he can take the knockout on Lycan Rock. All right, here we go. Because it's base 180 after everything, and he has two chances to hit 200. Uh, it'd be very important if he draws a float stone here, because then he wouldn't have to sacrifice those two energies on the active. Uh, and you also are staring down another Lycan Rock on the bench that's better than the one that's in the active spot. So you're still kind of playing from behind right now. Looks like Pramwet only has the two float stone though, and they've both been field blowers. So he's gonna have to pay oh, to retreat right. if that's the plan. We see another Max Elixir in his hand, but how many basic fighting does he have left? Oh, he has quite a few. Yeah, there's only one in the discard pile, I think. Yeah, one in the discard, three in play. But I don't see a beast ring. No, he's just gonna go ahead and Ultra Ball. Getting rid of some of the cards he doesn't think he'll need. It looks like a Brooklet Hill and a Lycanroc GX. Yeah, and I think this Ultra Ball is really just, like you said, getting rid of cards. Uh, yeah. N is going to be the biggest card right now in these remaining few turns. And when, even for Pram, like N could be a draw card for him. Yeah, he does have the artillery, but uh, he just needs to kind of make his deck as good as possible, basically. Max and Elixir No, miss. man, that is huge, because now it might just leave him with zero energy next turn. Finishing up off the Max Elixir. Going to be an interesting attack here for Michael Bramwell. Yeah, there we go. Can he flip the heads 
Uh, are you a fan of rolling two at the same time? Oh, apparently, apparently he I'm is. A, yeah, he gets the heads. I'm only, I'm only a fan of the one at a time. That's my style. Slow and deliberate. And here is the Mewtwo. That will be a knockout on the Buzzwall. And it being non two prize attacker, it's really going to put Pram just basically in like a checkmate format right now. Yeah, I mean, what, what, can, like, what can he do? So let, let's just say this happens. The Buzzwall goes down. What options does Pram have? What else does he have now to kind of keep himself? Uh, he has, uh, he could play a Guzma and an N in the same turn to try to win. Uh, so basically, Guzma up the Zorark, hope your opponent doesn't have a way to retreat it. You take a knockout in two turns. Uh, or you end him to, I think, two now? Or, or no, is he only at three prizes? Wow. Okay. He's still at three. Oh, no, he's at two now. Yeah. So end him to two, uh, and then he still gets one trade, and you sit there not really doing much, I guess? Like, you end him and then hope next turn you reach a critical mass to where you can actually take a knockout on a Zorark in one hit. Basically, it's just a lot of buildup for the next turn. You can see players consulting each other's discard piles. We get kind of down to the wire here. Two prizes are remaining for both players. A little under four minutes left on the clock. The counts in your deck become really important, making sure how many float stones does Prime have? Okay, I've, I've gotten rid of all two. How many of this does Pedro have? Really, really important as we get into these last few turns. Well, the thing that will seal the deal for Pedro right here is Puzzle of Time. Uh, looking through his discard, he's used one early on. So he really needs to find two of his remaining three. If he does, he can get another Lycanroc. And with that, just bring up the buzzwall with the energy, and I think Pram would just scoop there. You can't do anything. And wow, a Tapu Lele and a Guzma as well. Who needs Lycanroc when you can just Guzma the buzzwall? Not Pedro, that's for sure. <laughs> Looking through his own discard pile, or his deck rather. Kind of seeing a what his outs are. Search. Really just checking to see, like, I, I want to make sure I have these supporters and all that stuff for next turn. Actually chooses the Mallow here. Yeah, Mallow has a pretty cool interaction with Zorg GX, kind of getting to choose which uh, cards you draw, put two on top, and then activate trade and draw them both. What, what do you think he's going to go for here? It looks like he's eyeing down that Parallel City. Uh, definitely a good card. And Floatstone... Just another way to save that double colorless on the Mewtwo for later. Because remember, one of Pram's big outs is like, oh, I'm going to put all this energy on this Buzzwall and hope to take a knockout. Yeah, that was clearly uh, Pramwatt's plan from last turn, just kind of attaching, passing, and saying, all right, next, next turn or bust, basically. Yeah. Yeah, there's a pal He actually parallels himself. Such a smart play. He sees Pram's outs, and yep. he just completely gets rid of them. Yep, just negates them so that I don't need this org. It does a lot for me, but we're not going to play too many more turns here. That Brooklyn Hill should be in the discard pile. I'm sure it'll not be all that relevant as Pedro goes down to one prize remaining. No more Zorark on the board. Okay, so meanwhile, Pram's hand... Uh, oh, no, don't use Brooklet. Uh, yeah, there's no... Okay. Whew. Uh, so... He isn't reduced to his bench, so he can play that Tapu Lele down. He already has the Guzma in hand. He's now doing math. Two strong energies plus the Diancy. You do a base 140. You can flip two heads to knock out the Tapu Lele. What does he have left? Looks like what he's trying to determine. What are my outs? What can I possibly do? He also needs to hit this Max Elixir. It's his last one. There's four basics in the deck. Uh, but if he doesn't, he automatically loses. But if he does, oh boy. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's taking, taking a lot of time here, really considering his options. Going to take the Guzma. And it looks like time is winding down, but this game will be over either this turn or next. Oh, he has the choice band as well. Right. Is that... Okay, so 150... One heads? Max Elixir? Oh, no. that, that's knockout, right? He just needs this Max Elixir and he wins. 
Does he see it? Does he see it? There's the fighting. He gets it. He has it. Michael Pramawa. Guzma, bring up that Tapu Lele. He could not get rid of There's everything. There's the handshake. Michael wow. Pramawa advancing to 5-0. and oh. Wow. Classic Prams. Classic Prams. <laughs> uh, what else would you expect, folks? Uh, this guy does it and does it again. I don't know if you can hear that uh, reaction.